Now, in last video, we explored the most valuable credit cards to have, hotel credit cards, that is. We said that the concept was you have the credit card, pay the annual fee, what you're getting in return through the anniversary night or any other credits that this credit card may have. And many of you came back and pointed out to me that the Aspire already changed. We are technically still in a transitional period, or we were at the point of that video. So I wanted to explore what exactly are the differences through different use case scenarios, old Aspire versus new Aspire. So this is the video for this. Everything in the economy is changing. We see the trends, the interest rates are climbing. The economy is technically growing, but the everyday feel that everybody's getting, I think most of us are getting a little more cautious. Uh, we travel less, we spend less, especially on luxury items. I know that because of my other hobby, watches. And the reality is that a credit card company or any bank for that matter would make any changes only for their own profit. And this is the case with the Hilton Aspire. We all knew it was too good to be true. So without any further ado, let's jump to today's presentation and come back to wrap it up. Before we start, we're gonna go and see what the old Aspire was offering. The sign up bonus was 150,000 points. After spending 4,000 in three months, we had the $250 airline incidental credit, $250 on resort credit, $100 on property credit, two nights minimum with the world of Astoria, uh, or Conrad, one anniversary night, no limit on what kind of hotel that is. So there's a lot of value there. The membership was a diamond status, lounge access, priority pass, select up to two guests, no restaurants, the multipliers, 34X on Hilton, 7X on airlines, rentals, and 7X on US restaurants, 3X on everything else. The return on spend based on this was 38%. You can see on the maximum value how I'm breaking down the numbers and how I'm getting to these results. $900 is the value that I'm giving to the sign-up bonus based on a, a 0 0.6 cents per point evaluation. Uh, the $250 credits, uh, the $100, and then 261 is the money you would spend to hit the sign-up bonus, and that is equally divided between the categories. So the 34X, 7X, 3X, combine them and then divide by three. And that's where I'm getting the averages. At first glance, uh, the new Aspire seems great. It has 180,000 point sign-up bonus, but it's after spending 6,000 in six months. So they doubled the amount you need to spend and the time that you have to do that spending. So that helps a little bit but they only give you 30,000 points more. Now, the new in this credit card is the $189 clear credit, and that is very useful in my personal opinion. $200 flight credit, but this is $50 per quarter. The whole argument uh, for the Aspire as being the best credit card in the market was that you could have only one trip a year and without one trip you could easily pay for the annual fee and make money. But now you do what American Express is typically doing with the platinum and the gold. So you're getting basically a coupon book as you guys like to call it. $200 flight credit, but it's only $50 per quarter. $400 resort credit, but it's only $200 semi-annually. The $100 on property credit is still the same, and the anniversary night is still the same. Diamond status we have as membership, still the same, but they added the National Emerald uh, Club Executive, which is a nice addition. There's no lounge access anymore. And for me, this is a big no-no. Uh, personally, as I said many times in many previous videos, I don't take advantage of the lounge access. I only did twice. Um, and that was in Costa Rica. And it was a mediocre experience. I had a nice uh, coffee, a few snacks, and that was the end of it. I personally don't take advantage of it, but I know many of you do. So for $550 annual fee, I would expect at least to have a priority pass, but that's not the case anymore. The multipliers are exactly the same. The maximum value is increasing technically on numbers, but you see that because of the 
annual fee that's a hundred dollars more now the return on spend drops to 29.63 percent so let's say 30 percent so eight percent less than the previous uh version of the aspire but as we know what happens in the first year is one thing what happens in the second and every year after is another so for that we apply our imaginary budget at uh, twelve thousand dollars equally spread between travel restaurants gas and groceries and we see that the return on spend on the previous version was 9.37 and the today's version the new version is 10.8 and you might say this is incredible there is an increase here so why are you lying to us well this is if you take advantage of all the credits because if you don't then i don't think you're gonna get anywhere near this number this is based on the four hundred dollars so you're gonna spend you're gonna go at least twice a year to a hilton resort you're gonna get at least four flights a year which means that you're gonna be sp going every three months because if you lose that quarter then it doesn't roll out as far as i'm concerned to the next quarter this is per quarter so if you don't travel between january and march you're losing fifty dollars so you better use the next three quarters otherwise you're down fifty dollars so it's much more complicated and it's difficult to keep track of all these different requirements so i wanted to see what is my personal use case scenario on this credit card because i was never planning to use this as an everyday card and most of us would not do that we would only use this for hilton properties so i said okay let me add two thousand dollars only on hilton okay so i'm gonna get that for 34x plus all the credits and with that scenario with the previous credit card we were looking at 37 percent return on spend which is incredible incredible and right now we're looking at 29.29 29, so 29 percent return on spend it's a whole lot less eight percent less but it's still very close i mean this is a good return 30 percent is incredible so if you're planning if you're a hilton loyalist and you're planning to be traveling to hilton once a year my argument is that this credit card it's still an amazing credit card um, i wouldn't use it as an everyday credit card that 10.8 percent that we saw earlier uh, for everyday use for me and for the average person in the us is not attainable because you're gonna miss some of these credits the way they're structured and you're not going to be traveling four times a year to get at least not most of us and get all the advantages and even if you travel four times a year why force yourself to go to a hilton if there's better options out there that's just my opinion then i wanted to explore what happens with that use case scenario that uh, we talked in the last video so i'm getting this credit card keeping it in the drawer and i'm only using it for the credits and the free anniversary night and we see that with the previous version was giving us 111 percent return on spend so you were making double the money that you were spending on the annual fee easy and the current version only give us 61.64 now 61.64 62 percent is not bad if you compare this to an airline credit card or even any other credit card that gives you uh, a flexible currency it's still a whole lot more than you would get from any of those but my argument is that if you see the video we did just before this one there are credit cards that easily can give you 100 and more percent just for owning them one of them is the Hyatt, the world of Hyatt. Marriott credit cards, they give you that. And I would argue that the Hilton Surpass is probably a better option than this. This credit card just made it a whole lot more difficult for me to suggest to someone. I used to tell everyone to get the Hilton Aspire. Uh, it was a no-brainer credit card. You would only do one travel a year to a Hilton property and you were making money, at least double what you spend on the annual fee. And now it's a whole lot less than that. But it still makes sense in every way like all the numbers are positive and really high positive so if your use case scenario is that you're using the clear credit a lot you don't stop in lounges uh, so much like i never did and you are a hilton loyalist it's still 100 percent a, a go for it but for the average user that would use this once a year i would say 
there's better options right now. There's also another trend that I've seen with American Express credit cards that they keep changing these designs and they make them a whole lot more plain, uninspiring. So I don't know what's going on with this, but I like the previous version a whole lot better than the new one, at least look wise. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if I should get this credit card anymore. I said in a video before that this would be one of the credit cards I'm getting this year. And now I am not very sure about it. Um, still a great credit card, but it's certainly not where it used to be. But let me know what you guys think about this credit card, the changes on it. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one. Ciao.